You just gotta get it. You just gotta get a tattoo of the, all the languages. Though. There's only like I don't remember how we did the town, but there were like points of it had to be by size. Okay. So let's start. Uh, you guys had ten sentences to write, and I know that there's a few questions, and so I want to take time to answer a couple of questions because whenever. We do stuff in here. It's like a, it's a collaboration. It's a learning how to do that instead of, a, hey, did you do that thing? Let me score you on a one to ten type of thing. Although someday we should, you know, there was a really fun video that Shen uh, Wadiqat Ne Brown shared that they have the Yupik word of the day, which it wasn't even a word of the day. It's like they put a camera in your face and they just say a whole bunch of words and you're supposed to translate what those words are. So that would be pretty fun. And so just thinking of like uh, creating more of a kind of a social media presence, doing some things like that, uh, and just different fun things that we could do. Uh, but I always think of things as collaboration. So the first question that I was asked was, how do you say but, B-U-T, not B-U-T-T? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, there was, you know, I, I was... I learned a little bit of Hawaiian, and I learned enough to know that, um, oh, what is it? I think it's akole. Oh, I'm going to forget it now. But the, their word for butt, and then they, they made this, these seat covers that are kind of made out of like wetsuit material. And they had us, and the name of it was like wet akole. But that really means like wet, like the actual like butthole, you know, not, not like the rump thing. So it wasn't as... It was funny. It was really funny. So I took a picture. It was funny. It wasn't funny for the reason they offended it. Right. So there's two, there's two words we should look at, or two phrases. So the first is ku'a, and then the second is cha'an. And so both of these, uh, they, they shouldn't really start a sentence in Clinkit, uh, especially the second one. The first one kind of can, but you should say a ku'a. So you put the a in front of it. But usually the, the ku'a has several different, oops, no I'm not, thank you for the reminder. You're not recording. No, well, I am, but I'm not screen sharing. I'm like just talking about a bunch of stuff and looking obviously at a screen and then people can't see. Are you screen sharing? I feel like our table should be closer to the TV. Yeah, we've kind of, we shrunk a little bit, so. Uh, Feel free to like. Let's just move this whole thing and take a, take a minute and just. Sorry, guys. <laughs> let's just get rid of that table. Minutes setting this up. <laughs> no one wants to It's okay. All you wanted was to, for us to be closer together. I think that one's fine. I think we'll just sort of collapse this in, and then we can move that microphone, and then just maybe ditch that second table in there, because you guys can come way in. I'll just slide it my way, and then you can just... There we go. Okay. That's much better, yeah. All right. And so if, if you guys have like specific questions as you try to put sentences together, uh, we'll answer those questions. So the first one was how to do sort of an although, however type of thing. And there's there's two real ways to do it. In my mind, qua is like saying kind of however, and then jaan is saying sort of like uh, nonetheless or even though kind of a thing. So it's a little bit. So they're they're kind of logical terms, right? Like I have money, but I don't want to spend it. Uh, I don't have money, but I'm going to try and find some food, right? You know, so. I, it, some of them, 
you know, uh, it depends how hard that logic is going to turn. So, for example, the, this one has a couple other special uses. So, kua sometimes just calls special attention to who we're talking to, right? So, for example, I might say, uh, let's say we're at our Clinkit restaurant, which is amazing because we order in Clinkit, and if you order in English, they charge you like an extra 50% on that. And so I, I might say, uh, what, and how about you, right? What do you want? Or this, these are the things like, you know, someone might say, uh, how are you? And you could say, and you, right? So it, it could sort of turn a question back to somebody, anything, any, and it could be any question. Like someone could say, what's up, you do a sock? Right, and so it's a nice way to sort of quickly answer, quickly ask the same question back to somebody or to somebody else. Like this, she could ask me, And then you know I'm asking that same question. Or just to sort of point out, like I could say, Right, so I can say, and so this is, it's just so, sort of showing that we're talking about somebody else now. But it can also be used to talk about something. So some of the examples we've seen it is it say, Lance. Right, so it, it could pop up like there. And it could say, Lance. It could go either way. It's also in kind of too. Yeah, or, you know, however, or, you know, because it's not really also, because it's more just like, but in English, it's Lance, right? Because then you're, you're specifically pointing out that in another language, this would be another name. So if you said, um, I'd like to eat cake, but I'm watching my calories or something, all right? Right. Watching what I eat. Um, would you use kuba or chaam? Probably ku'ah. And so cha'an is more like, it could be more like, oops, cha'an, sorry. So cha'an would be more like, uh, the nice <laughs> sample sentence that an elder came up with, I think it was like, so they're talking about this animal, I can't remember its clinket name, it's called a chipmunk. <laughs> and uh, they were coming up with descriptive sentences, so we were trying to guess what it was. And as I was walking around seeing what sample sentences they were coming up, and they had fluent speakers at every table, it was amazing. And she said, Their hands are just so tiny, but they still exist because they eat with their tiny hands, right? And so that cha'an is more, they kind of do the similar type of thing. But maybe it's a little bit more of a harder to. And so John would work for that your sentence as well. Like, uh, and I think they use it like yeh, tai owe uchaich, John owe, uach um, ah, forget that one too. But he's still the raven just eats fat all the time, but he never gains any weight, right? So that's one that is in there. Uh, the other question was on. Uh, how to, if someone asks you how, it's inevitable that someone's going to ask you how to say things. Uh, and the types of things, some of them are more glamorous than others, like, could you name my child? But more likely they'd be like, can you name my dog? Or um, I'm getting a tattoo, how would you say this? Or what's the clinket word for this so I could put it on a shirt? And, and sometimes it'll really challenge you because the logic doesn't always work the same. And so if, if the question earlier was how do you say like not forgotten or won't forget or something like that, never forget. Never forget. And so we got to think of how Clinkit would sort of think of that thing. And so the verb root we're going to look at is And so when we look at this, so the theme tells us all the stuff, right? So N, ka, and so this is ka, 
One of these things that we've been sort of starting to look at, K is on, or the horizontal surface. Uh, it's usually on if it's outside of the verb. If it's inside of the verb, then it's usually like a horizontal surface. <clears throat> the T, this means uh, there's that T to arrive at. And then you have this, uh, the, what the tilde means is it means it could be something else. Usually in the future, that T is going to change to day because it hasn't arrived there, but it will in the future. And then we see there's an object. So these are things where sometimes we, we really push the subject-object thing, but then as we start to analyze Clinkett grammar, sometimes it's an object that does it, not a subject. And then S is the thematic, zero is the classifier, op is the verb root. This is a zero conjugation, and it's an event verb. And then we see for O to forget N. So now we know who, you know, so O is the one who does it. So this is why you say, a cut, cut, say, woke up. I forgot. A cut is say, woke up. You forgot. A cut, ha, say, woke up. We forgot. A cut, ye say, woke up. Y'all forgot. A cut, say, woke up. He or she forgot. A cut has say up. They forgot. A cut ka say up. People forgot. And so, but once you see this, then you could go back to those lists of things. And then this can this N could be there too. So you could say, a cut is say up. You forgot me, right? Or I could say, a cut hat say up. I forgot you. Um, so there's different ways you could do it. You could say like there's a negative form, you know, this is what we call a prohibitive, which is don't. So you could use that one like don't forget it, but that's better for like a situational thing. Like you're specifically, if you're teaching somebody and you're trying to give them the, the tough auntie or uncle treatment, that's a good phrase. <laughs> So we see it changes to the underline X, right? Because that one is repetitive. So it's saying like, don't ever forget it, right? And that's pre it's a pretty hardcore thing when you when you say something like that. Uh, then he or she forgot, uh, didn't forget. So you could also say, you could use a future form for won't forget. So you could say, Tesh akade. People will not forget. It won't be forgotten. Uh, the other way would be, this would be more of, this is a pretty formal sort of thing to say, there is no way he or she can forget. And you could put right between cut and this long part here to say there's no way it can it cannot be forgotten so that would probably be the the most sort of declarative way to say something like that they get really long but this is this is one that you're gonna see where if you say can't do it it can't happen this is how you're gonna it's gonna be it's a pretty complicated sort of verb structure you're gonna have clash and then you're gonna have odd day and then whatever the stuff that's get packed that gets packed in there everything jumps in between that clash a day and then you're going to get the yeh at the end, right? And so another kind of fun thing about verbs is we learn how to put a possessive suffix on a noun. If we want to tie two verbs together, the exact same suffix rules go on that second verb. So we go from kak to kak, exact same thing, because we've put what we call a relational suffix on there. Uh, and it pops up sometimes, but the other, the main reason it sometimes pops up there in the most common way is when you're tying two verbs together. It's, I'm thankful that I see you. The T changes to a D, right? All those same rules are exactly the same. Any other questions? Most questions get long answers. Okay. Anybody want to share a few of your sentences that you all came up with? Okay. Um, 
see. Has do was the tai ta the tai we ha ya. I was trying to say our boat is under their chart. Oh. Has do was the tai we ha ya. Has do was da ye. Say that one more time. Has do. Has to was die. Da die not tie. Die, yeah. Oh, oh, was. Oh, you're right. I didn't mm -hmm. do the form. I was trying to do tricky things. Oh, okay. It's okay. Sorry, that's good. Tie. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, let's see. I'll do an easy one. Shaye cut way dusha. Okay. And then the way could probably get cut from there. I didn't understand the way right. because, like, when I was looking in the book and stuff, it wasn't there, but it was on your examples in the slideshow. So I yeah, really like way Kate, way douche, like that, that. But you usually don't say that his head or that her head. So that means that. Okay, yeah. I don't understand. So it, that's it, ya and we when they come before a noun are very similar to this and that. To quote Snoop, Katie, Kate. <laughs> Anybody else got one or two you want to share? Let's do a couple. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Oh. Um, Anybody have one? How tiny I see. It's kind of a little story, but they're short sentences. So, how tiny I see. Is she a kaida? Do book day a huchatangi, do shatu a huchatangi, ka do book nach a huchatangi, kan de a hia, um, yinde a si, kinde a huchatangi, ishi de, gande a hard, uh, oops, gande a hardy nach a huchatangi. Um, and it was, uh, my daughter got under my nails, I told her, or stop, I said, or, from a now, stop from a now. I guess I was trying to say I said. Um, my words went to her ear. My words went through her head, or yeah, through her head. My words went out of her ear. My uh, fire came to my face. My eyebrows lowered. My voice raised. Stop it now. The the words went through the the fire hole. Huh. Okay. What's take a do go kick the way. Uh, I can't think today. Kadiki. She put a cork in one of her ears. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kadiki. Dik. Dik is to like, plug, to cork something up. Or to, and Kadik is, a, or Kadik is a cork. Okay. Okay. It's cheese. Anyone else? Anybody online, perhaps? Oh, Achit Nishi Hyende. Okay. He ran to the shore. Kashtin. This is from Kashtin. So Yende is usually uh, from the water to the shore. So he might, he, like if he was really fast, he ran on water. Uh, but usually you might say, um, oh, ni shi would be run. It's a command form. ni shi yende. Run to the shore. So it could work, yeah, like if the boat was out not very far and you wanted him to jump out and sort of run. But it could be sort of being used as... Uh, Perhaps a metaphor. You could also say, like, go by boat really fast. So, and these are something we're, we're going to get into the chapter about motion, about verbs and like motion verbs. So when we say, we've used this, a couple of different examples, wugut or yanagut is to walk, um, wushik, uh, or if you're from the yakdat peepin, uh, and then or 
Yanashkich is to run, and then Wukuch or Yanakuch is to go by boat. So I think somebody also had like a Yanakuch with like a tsa. And so it, it would work, but you'd have a seal like paddling in a boat. So. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Sha Yindi Yanagut Tsik. Yes, a, from Chukun, a black bear is walking down the mountain. Yuck, eh. Anybody else? Kathakleo of Hidi, Shikaki, Satiki, Stude, Yan, Nagut, Manishkum. Oh, yuck, eh. Yuck, eh. Kathakleo of Hidi. Ach, yeet? Ach, yeet. Yeah. Right? Your son? Uh. Yeah, so yeet. So the kinship terms, they don't get the possessive mark on there. Uh. The only one that does is yet, which is always always appears as yeti. Okay. But other than that, yeah, so body parts and kinship terms, they're interesting because they need to have a possessive, like a possessing noun, but they never really get a possessive suffix. Except in the case of body parts that get separated. Yuk eh. So he's in Zika and he went to school at Mount Edge. Yuk eh. Yuk eh, how are you? I messed up, but I messaged you. Um, awesome. I wrote a couple different sentences. Kutz astutu yik was the one, and then I think you corrected it to astutu yik. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we never we don't mess up. We just we just experiment. We just you know. but the general whenever we're using these so uh, the pattern for motion is usually going to be like the the place that coming to or going from and then the suffix is gonna attach usually right to that, day or dach or nach. Then usually the motion verb, then usually who might be doing it if you need to specify that. It's a really good, it can, it can move around a little bit. In Hawaiian, they use na uh, is their grammar machine because they teach you like the octopus tentacles as you can have a tentacle for each part of the sentence and then they could just move them all over the place. And Clinkit can do that, but I think it's good to start at a really straightforward, do this part, then that part, then that part. And so the good way to sort of straighten it out and to make sure that it's going to be clear is where they're going or coming from, attaching the suffix, the motion verb, and then whoever's doing it. Um, so we have, oh, let's see, kis. Would that be kis? Kis. Dach in the good way if it's walking up from the tide line, which is would, would be my guess. Because kis dach, uh, without the underline or the adjective on the S, would be walking from the bracelet. Yeah, so kis is the uh, tide, tide line. Yeah, yuk eh. And then there's, there's, uh, and there's, there's, you could do a lot of things too if you really want to sort of, like let's say um, there was a bear and we were all a little, just, we just want to know where it was. And so if you needed to be really specific, you could say, um, he's walking upland from the tide. So you're, you're saying he's really near the tide line, but he's coming up. Right. You okay. With cheese. Huh? Um, so, so, uh, oh, uh, the sentence? So you would say, So those are the other things too, is you could say where it's going and where it's coming from. So those, those could be, and sometimes those things are important too. Like you could say, let's say we're all getting together and I might say, And you could say, She's walking here from her house, right? And so those are just a couple of things. And so, uh, and clink it, the most important stuff usually always comes first. Um, and so for motion, usually the most important thing is like 
because you, know, you could say they're coming from home, uh, but it, it's sort of like, uh, it, it's just sort of like, let's say you were a teenager or, or you have a teenager, they come home way past when they're supposed to, and you said, where have you been? And they said, I'm going to bed, right? <laughs> so like, you, they always, you, what's that more important information? So you could say where things are coming from and where they're going to, but usually that most important piece is going to come first. Uh, let's see. Deiki. Deiki. Oh, deiki yanehin kit. So yanehin is a motion, it's a swimming verb. There's lots of different ways that things swim, too. So as we start experimenting with verbs, like the verb dictionary, uh, we'll just take a look at that so I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, in the verb dictionary, we'll see, okay, sorry. Let me pull that up and then we'll look at some swim verbs. And I'll try, I'll zoom this thing in so I can see the fine print. Oops. That's not what I want to do. Ah, that's not what I want to do either. Chat kau deki. Okay, so for swimming, uh, and we'll see some things here. So we have, here's some examples. So uh, for a person to swim, uh, for a person to swim is detach, is the base of the verb. And so that's, that verb root means to slap, because people slap the water when they swim. So we see here's deki. As we start to read these sample sentences again, we'll start seeing how these things get used. So one thing as we go through and we're learning these bases and suffixes, you can just go in and read. Now you can read these. You know, I was thinking about this quite a bit. And let me give you a, let me pull up a little photo for context for my conversation here. So I was thinking about this today because uh, somebody drew, uh, let me find the picture. Somebody drew a picture of like this kind of silly little animal in one of our meeting spaces. And so, yeah, so what I've been doing is, like I, I drew a little thought bubble around him, and I've just been writing different things in here. But so this, there's this concept in language learning and language revitalization that we call normalization. And normalization really just means how familiar is the language to place. How, like, for example, uh, we were in the Haines School over the weekend, and I was talking about language normalization. I said, well, let's just have a scavenger hunt. Walk around, see how long it takes until you find some clinket language. And we walked all over, we didn't find any. Right? And so that, that, that could be something that is a sign of trouble. Do you see the language around? Do you hear it? And that's normal. Or is it something where when you hear it, you're like, whoa. You know, and, and I know it, it hasn't been normalized yet. Because I'll see people that I know have studied the language, they can speak it, and they'll say something to them, and they'll have to, you know, they have to stop and say, OK, say it again. And it's not like something really complex. So some of the things, this is why we push ourselves to, to speak it to each other, to practice, to put it all over our house, to put it at our workplace. And so initially, uh, he says, the first thing I wrote in this little thought bubble was, I'm just looking for my arms. Because I thought it was funny, right? <laughs> but the, the reason that I kind of do this, because I know that probably nobody's going to know what it says. It, it kind of makes me a little sad, but then I can kind of have fun too. And, and the fun isn't like to make fun of anybody, but it's just sort of like, homework. hey, what's that? Like homework maybe a little bit? It could be homework, but and it could be like, I want, I want curiosity. I want people, as I keep changing it, maybe, you know. And so the second thing he says is, I'm not worried about it. Right? So that was the second thing he said. But then he's so cute and he has no arms. I thought this one would be neat. So itech kakwacha. What did somebody translate that for me? I'm gonna eat your heart. Yeah, so 
I told some of my colleagues what it was just because I thought it was funny, and then they drew little hearts inside of him. So it's very cute. <laughs> okay, so as we come back into here, now we can see these. So there is out to sea. They keep. It made it out to sea. Would it? Would to detach? We did it. So the other thing that you'll notice with uh, nation story is this kind of an older way of writing clinket, maybe not having the best ear for vowel length. So they tend to write most of their vowels long, whereas these first two we would write just as a U. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a, there's a nice project there of updating how we write these things uh, these days. But this, the sentences in here are just marvelous. Then we see heen kanach. So kanach means to go over the top of something. And it could be like a ball thrown over the top, or it could be going along the surface of the water. It could be either one. Yandetach, he or she is swimming across the river. And so then you see it changes for a plural uh, subject. And so again, we see dekit, and so swimming way out. So this is obviously something that's important in Tlingit, because you get a lot of cultural stuff. And some of them are obviously sort of nation story were missionaries, so there's a fair share of sample sentences in here that are certainly um, from a Christian mindset. Atkatsku. What is atkatsku? Yeah, a kid. Just a kid. Yan right? ach. And so this is, so you see the classifier changes, and now this is to swim somebody. Like if you have to go bay watch them, like go rescue them and swim them back. Sa yan outletach, and so he he swam the shore with a seal, so he brought it in. So okay, oh, the, and the W is is the tense that it is accomplished. Yeah, so this is perfective, and then uh, it has an object. So most motion verbs will not have an object, unless you are, unless it's saying, you know, like I walk there, I walked her there. Right, those are two really different verbs, right? Because one is just I went, the other was I, I either helped her or I carried her. So uh, fish and sea mammals, they like to huck, and Michael Phelps, right? They could do that. And so you could, that would be underwater swimming. But it usually has to do with like moving the body, not, not really the arms. So there's ichte to go south. Yai anach kechakch. So in this one, anach is up to the surface, up through the surface, along the surface, and then kechakch is to swim up. Right? We see the k in front of it for upwards. Plural, de kich, they're going out there repeatedly. Ashat uh, is a uh, steel hen. Hin yikt wu hin. So this is. Uh, to swim underwater of like um, just kind of a little bit of a different way. You know, this is usually this one is usually the more common one. Yahoo is for uh, a, this is kind of like dog paddling. So this is how a beaver swims, how a dog swims, this is how I swim, because I'm not a good swimmer. Di uh, is over to the other side. De dog wahoo. Again, that would be a U. Uh, douche kesh wuhu cat doesn't swim right. Kuwakan ya nakwan so nakwan so there's the motion verbs change whenever there's plurals. It's a very common thing. And then we've got uh, you could just sort of swim around like not really going in any direction, just sort of leisurely swimming around like a lot of seabirds do. Gah. So this at, when you see that at, and it gets confusing because we've learned at as like something, but there's another at which comes before a motion verb, which means just at that place, right? And so you say at yanagut, he or she is just walking around, right? Uh, plural subject, and then we have uh, sahu is another way to swim on the surface of the water. And there's probably real subtle, there's some subtle probably differences between some of these. Sequan, uh, is for um, especially like land otters and stuff, things that swim and, and poke their heads up through the water. 
because Yao Zha has to do with like inspecting, so their head keeps sort of coming up. Sa Yanas In At Yao Zha. So here's another plural. Here's something swimming really fast. Uh, here's things swimming in a school, like Kit Ya Yana Gwain. That would be from this particular verb, Ya Ya Gu, in Ya Sagu. And yeah, so there's Kush Datu Yana Squeech. So those are for things to swim together. Uh, let's see. So how would one say the killer whale swam way out deep? So if if it's swimming, uh, let me change this because it's doing one page at a time. Sorry. So there's a couple ways. One is probably using, uh, you could say, I would probably use this this form. So I would say, de keet uwakuk we keet. And there's some other things that we'll learn later about motion verbs. It kind of depends. The suffix, the directional suffix is going to determine how that motion verb is going to look. Right? So you can say, de ki de wukak we keet. The killer whale swam way up to sea. De keet wukak we keet. That killer whale has, it has made it. It's already out there way out to sea. Uh, okay, we got another sentence that came through from Achji Sha Shaki Yet Wei Tawei. So it's uh, Sha Shaki is usually the top of the mountain. So the Yet part would usually be like Sha Yat Sha Yet would be around the, the face of the mountain where it gets pretty steep. And so when you get into mountains, you know, it gets a little bit a little bit tricky. Yeah, Yik A. Okay. Did I ever show you guys this thing? Did we ever see this? No. Okay. So let's do a little uh, reading exercise. I think there's enough, there should be enough sentences to go around. And then um, looking at the picture and seeing what's there, we'll kind of collectively translate this as well. Hast du ich til khat ade kedist echt je? so that's the title. And uh, we'll get to that sentence a little bit later. This does have a cake dialect. So just keep that in mind. Who would like to read the first and we'll just do one sentence at a time. Oh, yeah. So there's the There it is. Now let's make it read. The Hun Tau Awe Shak Yet Scoop. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to zoom back so we can see the picture. The Hun Tau Awe Shak Yet Scoop. Can we translate that, anybody? Four years. Four years. So she's four years old, right? Because we're, it's obvious we're, you know, Shat Kiatsku, do we know what that is? The girl? Yeah, so four the girl years. is four years old, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Your reward is reading the next sentence. <laughs> Congratulations. Do ik kua te du shu ta kuk siti. Yeah, okay. Do ik kua te du shu ta kuk siti. So we see that kua, just saying now we're talking about somebody else. That's really a, a, a big function of that word, just to say we're talking about somebody else now. Because the way that Clinkit works is once we've mentioned somebody, we don't have to say their name or anything. We could just keep talking, and we just know that's who we're talking about. But then we signal the subject change with the kua, or sometimes with the awe, either one. Do ik awe, that would work too. Yep, so her brother is six years old. And we see talk away and talk city. They're just two different ways to say the same thing. Okay, okay. Hmm. So here's the picture. The girl. 
Ye duasak shat eyats kuadu ik shada 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 shat kiatsku shat kiatsku so we see this um at school at the end which is like a adolescent kind of and then shot would be the yeah small so there's you got yeti which is small katsuku which is a little bit bigger right and they're just they're phases of growth Okay, here's the picture. <laughs> okay, somebody who hasn't read yet, including anybody online, let me make sure my volume's on. Should be good. Somebody read. Yeah, okay, now hold on, I had the, I got the audio going the wrong place. Okay, now it should, theoretically. Okay. Shuna yadush keshkach echus ach. And then I guess read that part, where she's yelling. Okay, so let's translate those chunks. This part first. Shuna, yep, Shuna, the, the cat. Oh, the cat. Or this cat, yeah, if we want to be <coughs> really literal about it. It's pretty close, so yeah. Doesn't listen to anybody. So we got, so the way we know that is we got the kach ech people, right? So if you say kesh ach ech us ach, he or she doesn't listen to me. Kesh kach ech us ach, she doesn't because she's a cat, right? She doesn't listen. And then shuna gusuwe, where are you? Okay. Let's try. Let's try somebody online this time. See if I can hear anyone. I don't hear anything, but I don't think. All right, did anybody try? Okay. Translation. Yeah, yeah, their dog, and their dog's name is Kutaka, which is marble. Shuna, I don't know what it is, but we named our cat Shuna after this story. Did you hear the or something? Yes, yeah, so Akaya Akch is he or she understands. And then when you have Chas, that means only or just. So their dog only understands Clinket. And what's Ishide? Don't. 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 <laughs> Don't roll in the dead fish and the skunk cabbage. What's the last, you know, uh, the very last word that they all people? Kutaka. That's the name of the dog. Oh. And it means marble. Because oh. it's to flick. Kutaka is to flick marbles. Oh. Flip, flick marbles. Right. Huh? Like yeah. Which I have no idea how you. I'll, Ellie is marbles for rolling them around. <laughs> really? I had no idea. Really? Ta. We should call it ta. <laughs> I guess it would be ta, it would be like sleep. 
put y'all to sleep. Okay, uh, here is the picture. Anybody who hasn't read yet? Okay. You at Kujik Nuch, wait, a dead key. A dead key. That comes out real fast. Translation. You at Kujik Nuch. Do we gotta look that one up? So let's look up G. G. What's from here? So you got you a Kayajik would be he or she always sort of wonders about it. And then you have you uh, utkujik. You utkujik means to be curious, right? So the nooch part, have we seen that before? So, yes, all the time. So nooch can pop up, you know, so like earlier sort of previous generations of Clinkit classes that became one of their running jokes and someone would be like, hey, you're late. And someone would be like, nooch, right? And so just throwing that in. <laughs> and it's not grammatically correct, but it's still, it's just kind of fun. It's just using Clinkit to sort of, um, it's like, a, it's a bonding thing. It's a teasing <laughs> thing. So you at Kujik nooch is always curious. And then wait, a dead key is those, just children, right? A dead key or at Yetki, either way. Adetki is just a contraction of atyetki. They both mean the same thing. Okay, here's the picture. Need a reader. I'll take an online reader this time, perhaps. Awesome. Uh, Okay, gonna cheese has to cheese kohiti day. Ya has na at we at yetki. There, their grandparents' house. So then we get the day. There's the day part. Towards. The children went towards their grandparents' house. Yep, but we've got ya has na at, which is they're doing it right now. So the children are going to their grandparents' house. Yep. Okay. Oh, there's the picture. Sorry. Is this a book? It is. Like that? Would we have it in our library? Well, I'm gonna try and get somebody to publish it, but I'm stubborn. I don't want an English version of this book, but I'm probably gonna to have to yield. No one will publish it unless there's an English version. So far. But I guess we could do it ourselves. Yeah, why, why, why do we need a publisher? So someone doesn't copyright it or something? Like I don't that. care about that. Right, right, who cares, right? right? Like, as long as that language is being accomplished. Okay. Charles Shawat has to shift away the nation. Okay. Charles Shawat has to shift away the nation. What's that? Grandmother. Yeah, just so only the grandmother is at home, right? So Nehlu is at home. That's that is the answer to Gusu, right? So you might say like Gusu Khone Nehlu, he's at home, right? Is this your book? Well, I did this with George Davis and Marge Stetson. But I did the drawings. Uh, it's in the front. I can't remember. Dan, Dan or something? 
Somebody, a friend of a friend. It's cool. It's, I really like it a lot. Sheesh. Yeah, and, and we did a second one, and I had to get the... Yes, just their grandma was home. Sorry, I wasn't reading. Okay. Online reader, perhaps? Uh, awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, Y'all's grandfather went fishing. So this is a nice thing about motion verbs too, like wukuch, wugut. You can have a, just some kind of noun right there. Yejene, wukuch. He went to work. Ashech, wukuch. She went dancing. Um, yeah, astech is just the general word for fishing. It doesn't specify how you're fishing. It really means you're hooking. Techa is a hook. So you're, he went hooking, but um, it really just means fishing. Because, because it's clinkets, you have different ways that you can be gaffing, you could be fishing with the rod, you could be setting a halibut skate, you could be fishing with the net, you could be spearing fish, or you could be raking your herring. So those are kind of your six options. Oh, okay. Oops, I forgot to do the drawing. Here's the drawing. Let's pick up truck. You could use a trap too, that but that, that's not really, you're not really fishing, you, you just put the trap in the water. Out, so. Fish trap. Yeah, so it doesn't, I don't think it really, you could be trapping the fish, yes. But then, kata is a, uh, that's a vert, so that's the, the trap for animals, and that's considered to be trapping. But a fish trap has its, a different noun that's not related to a verb. Okay. Uh, anybody in here not read yet? Is everybody in here? Let's just open it up. Whoever wants to read it, read it. Okay. Yan shukach du chande gach tu kuch. Taikach enach ha das away. Not quite. Do we know this? Yan Shuka? Um, well, that, yeah, well, it's kind of. Uh, so there's certain, you're recognizing these combinations, which is great. So Yan Shuka really means like in the front of the, the shore, kind of. But Yan Shuka is a noun, which means camp. Right? So camp. And it could be like we went there to camp, but a lot of times the real origin of the word has to do with where you go to put up your food. And so then we see this. Here's one of these suffixes, yan shukach. There, it's going to happen there. Duhande. So we've already talked about grandpa, right? He went fishing. So that's how Clinket works. Once we've talked about someone, we'll keep talking about them and then we'll let you know if we're changing who we're talking about. So duhande would be to, towards him. To be with him, we're gonna go. We're gonna go meet him at camp. But it's really interesting the way that Klinka puts those things together, right? It doesn't instead of using these sort of linking little words in English, it does a lot of that work with suffixes. So okay? Yes, gachtu is always we will. So like gachtu we will. Yeah, Gachtu Saku, we're gonna know. Um, yep. Can you give me that for a second? Uh, please. Okay, Gachtu Skeet. We're gonna get into trouble. <laughs> we're gonna shenanigan. So it's just the Gachtu and then the verb. Yes. Gachtu is always we will. Gachyi. So the future ones, there's. They're long, but they're so consistent. They're by far the most consistent ones. 
because the classifier can only, it has to be minus i. And there's a few other things. Once you start packing things in there, it has to do certain things. OK, we're going to power through, then we'll take a break. OK, here's the picture. I need a reader. Okay. Has to adi hasakawa chuck. There's something. Yes. <laughs> and it's it's it doesn't really match the picture, so I'll tell you guys this. So this is a you know when you say atla adi, this is a uh, comes from a carrying verb. The carrying verb is to bring your personal belongings or your clothing. So this, there's a carrying verb for that, right? Like, what are you bringing? Oh, I'm bringing my, it's a suitcase, right? Even though it should be yanadi, so I think I made the sentences and we gave it to the artists and some of the things they didn't quite match up, but, but it's because I was stubborn. I wasn't always clear about how, I was like, if, if you knew clink it, this would be so perfect. Because, they packed their suitcase. Yes, that's, so that's how you would say they packed their suitcase. Right, that's exactly how you'd say that. Has to atli hasakawa chuck. Akawa chuck is to stack things up. And every time I say that verb, I just think of Chuck Norris like stacking things. <laughs> I don't know what I, I just wish I had a picture of him stacking things. So I could say Chuck Norris away Akawa Chuck. I don't have my picture yet. Okay. Ooh, who wants the big <laughs> This we're gonna spend some time with maybe we'll do this sentence and we'll take our break because if we do this sentence we've earned our break. I can't even make it big enough. Yan Chukat has has to see who's shada do to wa sigu has to cry. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So let's just find, what kinds of things can we find? Oops. Yep. So, and, and the way, you know, because you really just only see a verb root there. So, yan chukat has Then you got a whole bunch of other stuff. The way that this is working is basically when they get to camp, right? When they get to camp. That's a good guess. So, then the, as we sort of move through this, there's a couple of things that we got to pay attention to the ch thing. Has to uch. So when we see that ch onto a noun, what that ch is telling you, that's the person who's doing whatever the noun is, or whatever the verb is, sorry. So if there's some verb coming, that's the one who's doing it. So this is, and you know, we gotta use the picture for this too. So it's their grandpa. They would have to well, do to wasagu, not to wasagu. So their grandpa wants. Yes, but the astech and then the ayawuchai. That one you'd have to go sort of dig around, and it really means to take somebody by boat. I'm going to take you here by boat, and it gets you know clink is so fun. There's always it's always so much stuff to think about because the verb root here, instead of having kuch to go by boat, it reverts to paddling. This the verb root in here is to paddle. That's why we call a paddle a ha. And it's interesting too, because it has to do more with rowing than going from one side to the other side, which is teek. So when they get to camp, their grandpa wants shada to go fishing. And this gets really interesting because we've got a noun and a noun, but the CH tells you that the grandpa's the one who wants it to happen. And then he wants shada. And that, that's, you know, as far as like getting 
And, and the way that we did this, it was really fun because uh, a lot of children's books, like you might write it and then go to an elder and ask them to translate it. But instead what I did is I, I, I sort of thought of a, a starting point. And I said, okay, I've got these, these two characters that are loosely based on people that I've known over my life. Uh, the little boy is, he's supposed to be really sort of mischievous and kind of silly. And the girl is like a little grandma in training that's always trying to think of everything and, and how things should be. They are the lineal descendants of these two little puppets that were in this clinket. <laughs> so a puppet show that was made in, in the 1970s. And they're, they're fluent little clinket children. And so that was my sort of vision. And then I just sort of said, okay, let's come up with some scenarios. And so we sort of worked together to sort of come up with a story. I didn't try, you know, I kind of let it, but I let them take it where they wanted to. And I didn't say, how would you say this? But instead we tried to figure out, be, you know, because a lot of times you just get into trying to get the concepts and other stuff. And so, and we try to think of things that Clinket people would do, right? So going to see your grandparents and going to fish camp and going fishing, these are all very Clinket things. So we wanted to try and get some of those stuff. So we'll see how the story ends and then we'll go back to basis and suffixes. So uh, take five, come back caffeinated and strong, hydrated, <laughs> fed, watered, whatever. Okay, we're back at, so we did like, we're gonna rock you. We did some song lyrics. Um, <laughs> Can we sing it now? Ta'ach, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. okay, so, a different one? Right there, on the bottom one, there's a pinch, but it's over here. Oh, so this one, you have, when you have the U in front and the K at the end, that means it's something that's just continually happening, right? So in this case, if you're rocking yourself in a rocking chair, it's just, you gotta get the repetitive motion of it. And so that's why you get this, which means to rock yourself, and then it goes plus D, and you get kitsk, to rock. Yush, yush, click, yush, click, kitsk. No, it's fine. Uh, okay, yeah, so we're looking at like a song composition. So we had Hasil Kohas Hakach Yan Has Awadesh Haani Kach Kushagawu. Was that was that all of the parts you want to translate in? Mm. A new dawn on our people of our I can say like Cape Kwan or I don't have to put it in there, but mm -hmm. a new dawn on our people of Cape Kwan is upon us. Yes, ah, ha, de, kik, kwa, ah. Something new is going to break down upon us. Which is really, in this, um, in some of the Raven stories, uh, like, especially that Box of Daylight story, it's really interesting because uh, when, when some of the real old speakers would tell it, like Susie James and, um, uh, Frank Dick, they would sort of say, he would be outside talking to the people and he'd say, bring me something to eat or I might break daylight on you. And it's a, cr it's a crazy sentence. I gotta, I gotta find it just so I can show it to you guys. Then we'll go back to our, we'll go back to our kids' book. Um, like break daylight. I wonder if he means like, like if you ever got rock, like really rock and almost knocked out. <laughs> and, I mean, the verb means to dawn, but like, I'm going to do that. Too. I'm going to break daylight on you. It's a really, it's a wild thing. Let's see. It's like throw a shade. That's the opposite, right? Yeah, it's kind of like throw a shade. <laughs> Which could be fun. Um, 
Okay, let's see if we can find it. So here it is. So this one. And so this one, this it's a real because this, this is a really weird kind of like Raven talks like nobody talks like Raven ever, but this means I might break it like literally breaking a rope like object because you know whenever you break things like how did I say I broke it what'd you break right because it it depends on what you broke because you could break rope like objects and you can break uh, general objects and you know break bread yeah you break bread and so uh, anyways pia is day day break pian kakus yika so, I mean, you could maybe do haka ki an Maybe daylight will be broken on us. You know, so oh, it's just fun. So, anyways, the haka is how that part would work. But then this comes from there's a it comes from a verb. So, anyways, okay. For our nation, we give our all, so our legacy lives on. Uh, Are you writing a song? I, I want to sing it, yeah. We, well, for our nation, like, for our nation. so when you really get into, like, Clinket culture, you don't really get, like, it's not really about like our nation. It's not really even about our clan. It's not about our village. It's about our little grandchildren. So that's that's usually yeah. when we're sort of looking forward. Oh, They'll say, that's awesome. that's and then you could say, um, you could say something like this. You could say, stop. Okay, there we go. Ich den. Je. Je. Gachtune. For our little grandchildren, we're going to work super hard. Ich den. It's like to do something. Really, like you know, like he was really paddling or he was really doing something, and then we're gonna work. <laughs> ah, okay, back to the little book. So, we had this nice, big, fun sentence when they got to camp, their grandpa wanted shada. He wanted to take him fishing. Oh, there's the picture. Of, cr right. of course, the cat is there. Right, whatever. May I get a reader? Sagut Katusil. Oops. Psycho. Yende Yasana's name. Wei Yen Shuka. Okay, super translators. Shuka. Yes. 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 Yes.
Shuka, not Shuka. No, that's her name, right? Sagut. 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 Grandparent. Sagut and her grandma. I mean, because, yeah, you can tell from the picture. Weyan Shuka, that's the camp. Yende Yas Anasneen. So this comes from. Uh, so, <coughs> okay. if there's if if it, did you say it says grandma? Or how do you tell them their word? Well, it, so. usually you just say grandparent. Yeah, it's a genderless term. But if you look at the picture, you would just say grandma. Yeah. Yeah, and it could be, and there's ways, you know, you could say, Shawat the female one. the male one. So that's how, if you need to do that. And there's other ways you could do it too, like if you're talking about your grandparent, like you might say, So you just walk it through the kinship chart too. And that, that's another way to take care of it. So then you're just sort of pointing, and then we know that it's a... Because not only that, by doing that, once you've walked us through, we know if that's your in-law or what. We, you know, we can follow that stuff pretty easy. So let's take a look at this one. I don't know if you guys have seen this for before. Uh, so let's, let's put this one on our little whiteboard here. So yende yas anasni. So there's a couple... Uh, Oops, that got really tiny. So you probably know this one. Right? What does this mean? What does this translate to? Yenu ready, ready. Ready. That is correct. What does this translate to? Yenausane. So once we've changed the classifier, something happens, right? So the first one only has an object. Because you say, yen khati wane, I'm ready. Yen ni wane, you're ready. Yen ha wane, we're ready. Yan ausane, he or she fixed it up, got it ready, prepared it. This is the do it verb. This is the Nike do it swoosh verb. It can work for a whole bunch of stuff whole bunch of stuff, but usually it just means get it ready. This is the verb you use for clean your room, set the table, do the dishes, right? It's, it could be all of them. Because we all know, like when you live in a house, like whoever is like the boss of the house, and you know, it varies from house to house, right? Everybody in that house. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> we can have our wishes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not trying to say, not trying to say. But whoever's the boss, they're all different women. <laughs> whoever is the boss of the house, everybody knows how the boss wants the house to be. So when the boss says, "Get this thing, get it ready," then you you know what we're talking about. That doesn't mean just go pile the dishes up, right? That means because it can mean. When the snake, set the table, clean it up, right? So this is it's a very powerful verb and it really just means to do, right? To do. Ye ausene, he or she did it. But the yun part, it, it really comes from the shore, right? Like we said, it's a universal, it's a the center of the universe in the clinket mind. Because we see it. Once we say yun in front of a verb, that means to completion. So what we're talking about here when we say yende ya has anasnein, it's just a more complicated verb form to say they're getting the camp ready. That's all it means. They're, and that can mean a whole bunch of stuff. So in Clinkit too, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff because one of the things that Clinkit also does is it just has this assumption that you know all of the cultural stuff, right? Like you know what it means to get camp ready, right? Because if I said, you know, if your uncle says, hey, go, go get camp ready, and you go out there and you just, like, stack the firewood and then go lay around, like, that's, that's big trouble, right? Like, that you know what kinds of things, so, right? 
Here comes the whooping. <laughs> Cat. For real. Well, you got to finger it, uncle. It doesn't need it. And Angie. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Right? <laughs> a nice, a nice scarring scolding. Okay, so here's the picture. I need a reader. Oops. This is a champion sentence. Shada do e bach do e shate shatiwu kat adek. Yeah, well, the one thing that I would do would be change this to a J-I. It's just a little thing. Whole bunch of stuff packed in there. So, so there's that little boy, Shada. Yep. Grandpa. His grandpa, and his grandpa's doing it, his whatever grandpa, the verb is. Yeah. Right? He's the doer. No, no. And, it's like a do, that's and, right? Well, do, do, e. So this is one we're going to get to, maybe not today, but we'll definitely look at it next week. So this is what we call the empty base, right? And this one, the cake people say shatiu, like tu at shatiu. A lot of the other folks would say shatu, tu at shatu. Sha dat du sis kuch du e shatiu. Shada, his grandpa, teaches him. Do e shatiwu. Chat. A dekedest echjiye. That's one verb. So the first part that we should sort of look at. Get the fish on the hook. It's got that ade in the end of the thing in the middle. What's that? Can you do it well? So it's hot and hot. Well. In this case, K is just part of the verb form. So, K dust H would be people fish. They just do it all the time. That's what, that's what this one really means. People fish, so we see the D built into the verb. People fish, right? But then if we say K dust H G Y with just the Y at the end, that would mean the place where people fish. So we're talking like if we're in the village and I'd say, where's the place where the people fish? Right? And then they'll probably be like, I ain't telling you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you just got here. But when you put a de on, these are like book, bookends. If you put a de and then ye at the end, whatever that verb is in the middle, it could be a whole bunch of stuff. That means the way that the verb, the way of the verb, right? This is really big conceptual stuff. Shanta's grandpa is teaching him how to fish. So this is, it's a really big conceptual thing, very important culturally, because you might say, so you might stop someone and just say, wait, wait, stop. I want you to know how clinket people dance, right? The way that we do these things. So this ade blank, yeah, it's a very important thing. And even though it looks like a whole bunch of stuff, ade, verb be, yeah. The verb gets that relational suffix, ade and yeah, go on either side. So this is something where someone might ask you a question and clink it, and you answer it, and you could just say, Adechasaku, yeah. That's how I know it. That's the way that I know it. This is how they taught it to me. The way that we are taught. 
So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do from this base form. But that's what this sentence is doing. And when I was working with these elders, I told them, so I said, uh, my children eat real food, so I want them to hear real language. Because sometimes, if, even if we're writing a kid's book, the temptation is to make it really super, super simple. But my thought was, no, because they have to understand how Klingit works. Right? And so these are important conceptual things. Okay, this one's not as not quite as hard. There's a picture. Yep, ah, it's king salmon. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Let me just check it. Can you guys hear us out there? Okay, there we go. There's everybody. Okay. Yeah, so somebody shocked the ooh, got it. They caught many king salmon. So, ah, clean, ah, many salmon. Ah, clean, this many moose. They caught many fish. Yuck, eh? You know what I, I noticed um, Ruth Demmer saying, instead of saying, ah, clean, gonna cheese, she always says, gonna cheese, ah, clean. Yeah, I, I, it works either way. You can also say "gunnel cheese claim," which would be like a big thank you. Ah, claim gunnel cheese, many thanks. So ho ho is gunnel cheese ho ho. Yeah, that ho ho comes at the end for like an emphasis, like a real sort of ceremonial kind of an emphasis. Like this is a bigger deal than just day to day stuff. So I'm sorry. What's the difference between mini and big? Because like, those fish, there are many of them, and they're also big, and that word kind of seems like it could be. Ah, uh, plain. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, plain. Oh, just plain? Plain is big. Okay. Ah, uh, plain. Okay. Big, big king salmon. Okay. Ooh, here's another fun one. We should already know. We should know some things about this. First, I need a reader. My little volume meter is doing weird things, and I don't know why. I like his tongue. <laughs> ah. <laughs> like he's been eating blueberries. Anybody online want to read this one? It's nice and long and fun, full of fun stuff. Okay. So what are has to see has to eat a tew hot a day? Oops, sorry, this these are I think that's an older version. Sorry about that. Do a shock yet. And so I would change this one as well. I think I did in a later version. Do a shock yet. Do a shock yet. Okay. Un don't do that. Okay. Help me unpack this. Help me help you. So we went from grandma, now they're talking about Shawat uh, has to do. Yeah, Shawat. Yep. So Shawat, uh, the, the woman, one, their grandparent, has to eat at you, is teaching them. Hot. Fish. A day. Yes, but this is 
this is interesting because if you look at the picture, Clinkit has a verb which means to remove the guts of a fish. That is kishak. Kishak is to, to gut a fish. Right, so it's not, because there's a, there would be, uh, kash would be the verb root for cutting a salmon. This is specifically, like you would probably translate this as their grandmother is teaching them how to clean fish. That's what it comes down to. But how to get it ready. The first step is kind of getting it ready. Well, it depends on how. Yeah. How it's a nick. So how is it different from how you wrote it? You said there was a change. Oh. Do, do you, uh, uh, yeah, so the going back to the last one, like I would change the last one. And so I've got, you can go to iBooks and you could, this is on iBooks if you guys want to get it on iBooks. I'm going to try and get it published so that we can have it. I'll put a link to it on the site, but uh, the changes here would be these, there's an error there, those should be reversed, so it's and then this would become a GU. Because whenever you put the ye on the end, the relational suffix needs to be there. Uh, the ending, I'm sorry, I was writing it down. Oh, whoops. T-L-E-I-L. So yeah, so this would be T L apostrophe high tone E I L A underline G U. And it doesn't need the yet. Oh you no, know, the yeah would stay on there. Then the odd the odd means like she's teaching them something. Well, just do E to T U and then. Like you could have a whole bunch of stuff there, but then the ade verb ye, teaching them how to whatever the verb is, right? For example, has to ishatiu ade adutlehiye, the way that people dance. Has to ishatiu ade wududziiye, the way that people cook. Has to ishatiu. The way that people learn clink it. Right, so the, there's between the ade and yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you could put in there. And so this one, uh, if you look at it, the last one was fishing. This one is cleaning the fish. Oh, there's a picture. That's cool. That's so cool. Reader, cook. Cut at a yak wa a yagu away could the tea at ya at ya awune a jik to tea ya a da ye jitune at. Okay. The cut at the yak wa he yaku away could the tea a jaya at ya awune. A jih to tea, ya a da ye jit to ne hat. Translators, activate. <laughs> Does that first word mean like, like for all time or something like that? Uh, shtakat that is everything. Oh, everything. Shtakat is all. So shtakat at is everything. Shtakat ka is everyone. Shtakat ye day is everywhere. Shtikat Yuhan is all of you. So everything. Ayakkaheyaku, a spirit. Awekudzati. Kudzati. Life or existence? To exist. A spirit exists in everything. Achaya. This is a really good thing to learn is achaya. And achawe. Is that like that's the way it is? Not quite. Ach is because. Achaya, because of this. Atya awune. Respect. No. Respects. Ajih to tea. Anyone online know this one? 
a jich to tea. It's the hands, right? So, like, you might know a similar one, which would be like achjit te. So, everything that you work with your hands? Ajih to ti, we give it repeatedly, right? So, you could say ajih to ti nuj, we always give it. But the nuj didn't, it didn't have to be there. So, you said nuj is always? Yeah. It's always, always. Ya ada yeji tu nechat. Ada is around it or about it. Yeji tu ne is. We are working fish. So if we put all this stuff together, everything has a spirit. Because of this, we give respect when we are working on the fish. Beautiful. Right? Or we work on the fish with respect, however you want to think of it. But the clinket has to handle it a little different. What's interesting is, uh, and, and we've had similar sentences as I worked with, uh, George and Marge, and they consistently wanted to do it like this, because you could. There's a verb for respecting, but the bigger thing for them was like we give it to them. It's like we're handing it to them. It's like it's this thing. A jichtuti nuch. We give it. Atya wane is giving respect. This is respect, and then a jichtuti is to to give respect or to give. Just to give. Yeah, is I respect you. Yeah. And so, but there's a lot of things in Clinket like respect. It, it's it should be just it's just understood. But to like to give respect to something, it's kind of different too because it's because you know this the the ways that they've used this one consistently is when we're talking about something that was dead, like the bear mother story and stuff like that. The woman who married a bear. Okay, two more pages. Just the picture. Readers, activate. Gunach has a what's it? We ha ka kunach has to a wook a. Okay. Ganach has a what's it? We ha. It was good. Yeah, it was very delicious for them. It was very delicious to them. It was delicious to me. It was delicious to him or her. And then we got the kunach, so it was like so delicious. Ganach is like. On the fire. Has awitzik. This is to barbecue or to roast over a fire. The salmon. Then we get the double bonus one. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted something really silly, and so the, the cat sneaks out at night and he's in a jazz band. So that's just, that's just how it is. Yeah, we can shoot a ton. Anybody? Hey, that's how it ends. That's how it ends. That's how this one ends. That's a nice way to end a story. Is with that one. Yeah, away yan shuatan. A bear on the upright face. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can see the club, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, the pause. Man. It works. Do you play the guitar? Catch a catch drummer. Okay, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll we'll go back to uh, bases and suffixes. So just keep ironing out your ten sentences. We'll work on them. Oh, the one before it. I need a bunch of flashcards. A bunch of flashcards with like nouns. I get it for nouns. I would sick. Um, 122.
Uh, yeah, there's no class on Thursday. Well, we got class on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll post them so that you guys, uh, if you ever miss class, you should be able to just catch them on clinkitlanguage.com. Just look, in, look at the link, and I'll put the, the handouts there. I'll, I'll put a link to the updated version of this little book that we went over. And uh, I put the slides from our last class up there. <laughs> Just cheese, you hot. I just like.